Today I am here with a rare, unique opportunity to play two legendary pianos that I've never had the opportunity to play side by side. The piano I'm sitting on here is a Blutner, I believe it's a Model 2, I can't actually find the model name on the piano, but it's the same size as the Fazioli F228. So that's 228 centimeters or seven and a half feet long. So if you guys know, I think this is the Model 2, but if I'm wrong, correct me please in the comments down below. But I have a rare and incredible opportunity to play both of these side by side. They're literally inches apart, and I've never had that opportunity, opportunity before, and so today I'm going to be giving you a comparison between the sound of the Fazioli F228 and the Blutner Model 2. Both of these are gorgeous pianos. They sound amazing, they feel amazing, but they are also different. One is Italian, one is German. Uh, one major difference I can see here is one has blue felt here and one has red felt over there But there's a number of other differences as well that make these pianos different So I'm going to be showing you guys the sound differences between these and giving you my thoughts of what they sound like What makes them different and also what the feel of the action is like and all kinds of things like that But first I wanted to start off with the visual appearance of both of these and probably the most striking thing to me is that the Blutner is a little bit shorter than the Fazioli, not in length, but in actual vertical height. There's probably about an inch or so, this is about an inch or so lower than the Fazioli. Now I'm noticing that the casters appear to be bigger on the Fazioli, and that might be why the instrument is a little bit taller over there on the Fazioli. But when I'm sitting here with the Blutner, I feel a little bit shorter. When I'm sitting at the Fazioli, I feel like I'm taller and I'm sitting up a little bit more because the bench has to be taller to um, you know, account for the instrument being a bit higher. I wonder, are the keyboards at the same height. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, yeah, the keyboard on the Fazioli is maybe half an inch higher than the keyboard and the keys on the Blutner. So that's just one interesting detail that makes these pianos a little bit different, but also just simply the visual aesthetic of the inside. The Blutner has a much different design harp than the Fazioli, as you can see here in some pictures I will put up on screen. The Blutner, the right-hand side of the harp almost reminds me of, I don't know, the saying is Swiss cheese. These holes aren't round, they're random kind of geometric shapes. But the harp on the Blutner is very open. There's a lot of open space, especially on the right-hand side. The entire left-hand side is pretty much open. And the entire right-hand side also is very open. It's very open, really. And um, so that's an interesting detail to note. As I said, Blutner uses blue felt, so it's a bit of an interesting um, design detail there. And another thing to note is that Blutner uses a system called the aliquot string. So basically what this is, is it's a fourth sympathetic string that's up here in the treble. I believe it starts at this C. No. It starts here, actually, on this piano, it starts at this E flat. And basically everything above this E flat is going to have an extra sympathetic fourth string. The hammer doesn't strike this, this string, but it is there to resonate sympathetically along with the other three strings that the hammer actually hits. And it's basically designed to add more presence and more power and just more sustain into the treble, and it definitely works. Blutners tend to have a very resonant tone and a very beautiful sound. The wood that's used on the inside of the rim is also a bit different. It's kind of a brown wood. I'm not really sure what it is. It kind of looks like bubinga a bit. Uh, it's this rich, dark brown wood that runs on the inside of the rim, and it's a very pretty look. The Fazioli uses a much different wood. Let me move on over here to the Fazioli and show you guys the inside of that one. As you can see here, if you're looking at this and you're wondering what the lines here are, that's simply the plastic that's used to protect the finish of the piano. There's nothing crazy going on here. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the plastic that is used to protect the finish and keep it shiny. So the inside of the Fazioli, like I said, is different. The harp is a bit of a more traditional shape. It's, uh, like I said, it's more traditional. You've got the round portholes that you see on most other piano manufacturers. It's a bit more closed. It runs all the way along the rim there and is, is open in the back. On the back end of the soundboard, there is a large Fazio Fazioli stamp. It's got some, I think it's just got like some Italian writing. It's got the Fazioli name on it. And it's a very cool, it's got like a crest or something on it. And as you can see, the wood that's used on the inside of this instrument is much different. I've heard it ref being referred to as burr wood. I don't know what tree it comes from. Maybe it's called a burr tree. I don't know, but it's called Burwood from what I know, and it's got these really interesting, intricate knot holes in it. And after Fazioli started using that wood on their pianos, a few other piano manufacturers also started copying them, which is kind of funny. Perhaps they did it before, but I only started noticing it after Fazioli became famous and well-known for making incredible pianos. 
other panning manufacturers also started using that as well. You can see that the inside of this panel also is just, it's really pretty overall. I love the visual aesthetic of Fazioli's. This moves back really nicely. Um, the rich red felt is really beautiful, the vibrant color of it, and the overall color of the piano inside is just absolutely gorgeous. And the interesting thing about Fazioli is that they actually use gold, real gold, in all of their um, hardware. So all the hinges and little components you see are actually coated in real gold to keep them from tarnishing ever. 50 years from now, this piano will still look beautiful, or at least the hardware will. So that's a very interesting thing to note about Fazioli, that they use gold on their hardware. One thing I did want to note about the music desk here is that on Blutners, these slide really well. They're very, very, very satisfying to move. The Fazioli does as well, but I just want to mention that the music desk on these Blutners slides back and forth very, very nicely, and it's very wonderful to move. I think that's about it for the differences between these two pianos and so now let's get into the more analytical side of it let's see what the sound difference is between the Fazioli 228 and the Blutner Model 2. Let's start off here with my test piece that I always play on these acoustic pianos. It starts out from the treble goes down into the tenor and then after playing that I'm gonna hop right over to the Blutner and play the exact same thing so hopefully you guys get a really neat idea of what these two pianos sound like. I've never had this opportunity before and I don't think anyone has ever done a video like this comparing a Fazioli and the Blutner. So let's see how this sounds. So that is the sound difference between the Fazioli 228 and the Blutner Model 2. Of course, I'll play a couple more pieces after this, but that will demonstrate the sound of the treble difference between the Fazioli and the Blutner. And what I'm hearing is that the Blutner is not only a little bit more resonant, but it's also a little bit brighter. It's very sparkly. It's like breaking glass or ice. That's kind of the sound that I think of when I hear the treble in this piano. It's very, very sharp, very bright, and very, very sparkly. It's a really wonderful sound, and it's a lot different from that of the Fazioli. Part of the sound difference that is happening here is the aliquot system. The extra fourth string there is giving it a little bit more resonance, and you can really hear that if you hold the pedal down and play some notes on the Blutner. You can hear that the rest of the piano resonates a bit more than on the Fazioli. The Fazioli, of course, still has some of that. I'll demonstrate that a bit later in the video, but there's a bit less on that than on the Blutner, and that would be the aliquot system. And I think that some of that brightness in the treble and some of the, the sustain and stuff is coming from that aliquot system as well. Let's check out the Fazioli. Fazioli once again. It is still bright, it is still there, but it has a much different sound. In the very high treble, the highest octave, it has that kind of that icy sound, but then the rest of it, it has a more of a warm, a more mellow sound, which I think is kind of interesting. So that is the sound of the treble on the Fazioli 228. Now let's test out what the mid-range of these two pianos sound like. I'm going to start off with the Fazioli again, and I'm going to play a Bach piece in the key of G major, hop over to the Blutner, play the same piece, and then come back and play another Bach hymn in the key of E flat. So we'll see how those two sound. These pieces tend to bring out the warmth and the, the loveliness of the mid-range of these pianos. Let's see what it does to both of these pianos.
So that is Bach pieces played on first the Fazioli 220 and then the Blutner Model 2. Is there a clear winner here? I don't think that there is. The sound is different on both of these pianos, but it's both it's pleasant on both of them. It's a little bit different. In a way, the sound of the Blutner is a little bit more direct than on the Fazioli, and in a way, the sound on the Fazioli is a little bit more direct than the Blutner, because the Blutner has a little bit more sympathetic resonance, but the sound of each individual note, I think, is a little bit more uh, crisp and direct than that of the Fazioli. It has a very rich sound. The Fazioli has a very harmonically complex sound for each note. That's what I'm personally finding. I'm finding that when I play music, it just sounds a little bit more thicker and just more substantial than on the Blutner. The Blutner still sounds very, very nice, and it has that resonance that really makes up for that, but the front just has a certain fat sound to it. It's hard to describe. Hopefully it comes through on camera, but that's the sound that I'm feeling. 
Now, one of my favorite things about the Fatsuli is the base end of them, and I also like the base end on the Blutner. So let me do an interesting comparison where I play just like a bass note on here and then a bass note on there and see what it sounds like. This is a C and then octave, and then here. D. Jump to A0. There is a different sound, and it's really, really interesting. Let's do the same thing with the treble. Let's hold the pedal down and then just play like a little simple arpeggio. Let's do the same thing on the Fazioli. So there is a lot of resonance here in this piano as well. It's not quite as pronounced as on the Blutner, but there definitely is some sympathetic resonance, as it would be with really any piano. But there is a little bit more on the Blutner, and whether or not you like that or dislike that is pretty much going to be up to personal taste. The aliquot system is one thing that makes a Blutner a Blutner. It's one of the things that really gives them their characteristic sound, and that's just something that that is, that's what the Blutner uh, piano is. It has that extra fourth string that gives it a little bit more presence, a little bit more sustain, and a little bit more resonance up in the treble. Speaking of sustain, how is the sustain up here on this F, the note I always like to test? Pretty good. Let's try this E. It's still going, actually. That E is really good. Something about this room, when I play a note, it seems like it's really loud because the impact is bouncing off the walls and then everything seems to die kind of quickly. If I was in a more dead room, I think that the sound would be a little bit more accurate for me, but the recorder's probably picking it up pretty well. Let's try the sound over here on the Blutner. Also really good. That's very, very good. Also very, very good. That aliquot system, you can definitely hear the difference when you play the treble on a Blutner and then play the treble of a piano that does not have that extra fourth string. I've never done that before, and it is true that it is adding some extra sustain, some extra resonance, and just some extra presence in the treble. So that's a very interesting thing. And hopefully you guys have found this comparison between these two pianos to be very interesting. Uh, I've, it was really interesting for me because I've never had the opportunity to play a Blutner and then play a Fazioli sitting literally side by side in the same room. I don't think anyone ever has done a video on that before, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of the Fazioli and the Blutner. Let me know down in the description which one you like the sound of more. Do you like the sound of the Blutner, that kind of the direct, the more resonant sound, or do you like the sound of the Fazioli, that rich, that fat, that clean sound? Which one do you like more? Let me know down in the description of the, I mean, in the comments of the video. One thing I didn't mention, though, is the action on these pianos. Both of them use Renners, and both of the Renner actions are uh, manufactured to the specifications of each company. You have Blutner. That has their own Renner action, and then you have Fatsoli that has their own Renner action. And I find that the action on this particular Fazioli is a little bit more substantial than that on the Blutner. The Blutner is closer to a light action, and the Fazioli is closer to a heavy action. It's not heavy. It's what I consider to be substantial, where it has a bit of weight behind each key when you push it down. The Blutner is a little bit lighter, and it's a little bit more fluid. And this one here is a little bit more soupy, if you will. It's a little bit more substantial. It's still very wonderful. And I honestly kind of prefer the feel of a piano with a substantial action than to that of a light action. A light action is great for playing fast, but I really do enjoy the feel of a piano with a substantial action. A little bit more predictable to me when the note is going to hit, and I really, really enjoy that sound and uh, that, that feel. So the Fazioli, at least this particular one, has a very substantial feeling action. It's also very responsive. That's the really important part. You, if you were to play fast in this, it would do just fine. If you were to play soft and quiet, as I have been, it would do just fine. And the same thing would be true on the Blutner. It does great playing soft and would also do just perfectly fine playing uh, fast and loud. So just a little bit of a difference there between the actions. The one on the Blutner is a little bit lighter, and the one on the Fazoli is just a little bit heavier, and they both feel very, very good. Again, I kind of said this earlier, but I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison between the Fazoli and the Blutner. Never had this chance before, and I probably will never have this chance again. If you're interested in seeing these two pianos for yourself, by the time you get here, if you could do visit the shop, these might not be here. But the information for this store will be in the description of this video, so if you're interested in coming and checking it out, you really should. They have a lot of really cool pianos, and hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing this video. If you did, you might want to go ahead and give the video a like, and if you want, you can think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.